One of the issues that the church and most people refuse to deal with is the reality of mental illness, the reality of depression. It's an issue people don't like to talk about. I submit to you tonight that mental illness is just as real as cancer. Depression is just as real as a broken arm. I'm going to talk to you tonight about the reality of mental illness, the reality of depression, and I'm going to talk to you tonight, especially those of you who are depressed. Even though this is a season we associate with joy, the reality is it's also a time when many people fall into a deep state of depression. So stay tuned for tonight's edition of Live Prayer. What problems are you dealing with in your life right now? Do you feel like giving up? Times are hard and you're not strong. I know the answer for you. And it will lead to the truth. Don't look back to yesterday. Now there are answers. Welcome to Live Prayer. It's waiting there. Here's your host, Bill Kelly. You can make it through. And welcome to Live Prayer. I'm Bill Keller. I'm so glad to be with you tonight on this Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Welcome to the program as we deal with an issue tonight that most people don't want to deal with. Most people want to act like it doesn't exist. But it's the reality of where many people are at tonight. That's the reality of mental illness. That's the reality of depression. We're going to talk about that in a few moments. Take your phone calls. It's going to be a powerful hour, a moving hour. I believe tonight an hour that is going to really minister to many people watching me tonight, especially those of you who are in a state of depression right now. So I'm glad we're here tonight. I want to welcome you to the program. Of course, live prayer is seen exclusively here on CW44 here in the Tampa Bay market every Monday through Friday from 1 to 2 in the morning. I'm so glad that we're here with you tonight and each night. Tomorrow night's program is going to be a very special program. Last Friday night on ABC's 2020, they had a two-hour special, Is Heaven Real? Tomorrow night I'm going to deal with that very issue, Is Heaven Real? Of course, ABC gave you pretty much the world's perspective of heaven. I'm going to give you the biblical perspective of heaven. That's coming up tomorrow night on Thursday night, a very special New Year's resolution for you to adopt. And then on Friday night, wow, we've got so much Friday night. I know many people, as they go into the new year, one of the biggest issues in their life is their finances. I've got a dear friend of mine, actually grew up with this guy, Joe Valenzuela. He's going to be with me on Friday night. He's uh, basically dedicated the last 20 years of his life to helping people with their personal finances. So we're going to talk about that on Friday night. Personal finances help people start the new year on a good financial footing. But Friday night, in addition to that, is also a very special evening because it will be our 1,000th TV program. Unbelievable. I remember sitting in this studio almost four years ago when we did our first program. I could not have even imagined that night as we turned those cameras on for the first time that we would be still doing this a thousand programs later. Plus, it's our last program of 2006, so we've got a lot happening Friday night. So make sure you tune in. It's going to be a great evening. As I sit here tonight, I just want to say something. I so much appreciate all the love and the prayers from so many in this audience each night. I don't get a chance to say thank you often enough, or I don't take the opportunity often enough to say thank you. But every day I get so many wonderful emails from people who watch this program, tell me how much it means to them. And I just want to let you know that your thoughts and your prayers, your love is just deeply appreciated. 
And it's an honor and privilege for me to be here in this chair each night. It really is. It's something that I enjoy doing because I know God's using this program each night to minister to people. So for those of you who support this program with your prayers, a lot of you support the program financially, thank you so much. It really means a lot to me. It really does. I also, in addition to welcoming all the people watching on CW44, I want to say a very special hello to all my friends watching tonight via our live simulcast on liveprayer.com. Welcome to you folks, wherever you're at, around the nation, around the world. I'm Bill Keller. I'm the founder of liveprayer.com, the world's largest interactive Christian website. We reach a little over 2.4 million people every day via the Internet. I'd encourage you next time you get online to come visit Live Prayer. The web address is on your screen, www.liveprayer.com. When you go to the website, you'll find links there to tell you about the ministries of Live Prayer, my testimony, the daily devotional I write each day, our new devotional archive, where we have an archive of all the devotionals I've written for almost eight years now. You've got the show archive link, which has our last five TV programs, special video prayers for finances, for healing, for relationships, for salvation. There's lots of things on the website. Everything for free, everything there to design has been designed to minister to you in your time of need. So please check out the website. And when you're there, make sure you send me a prayer request. There's a prayer request link. When you click on that, it opens up your email browser. And you can send me off a prayer request. And we not only read and pray over everyone, we respond back to everyone, over 40,000 every day. So take advantage of that. Matter of fact, let me give you my email address right now. It's bkeller at liveprayer.com. bkeller at liveprayer.com. Jot that email address down. That's where you can communicate with me anytime. Also, when you're on the website, on the home page in the TV program section, we now have up a copy of the press release that uh, came out last week announcing the joint venture uh, that I shared with you last week, a California-based film and television production company uh, has partnered with Live Prayer. They're going to be infusing roughly $24 million into this program uh, within the next 30 days, actually, that's going to enable the program to get back on nationwide and uh, not just back on nationwide, but on to stay in a firm with a firm financial backing. And from the plans that are on the drawing board right now, I'm excited because a couple things are going to happen. We will always be on at this time slot on, on UPN or CW44 here in Tampa, but the program is going to move to the afternoon when we go back nationwide. So we'll be on all over the country in the afternoon which is going to bring a brand new, much larger audience to the program. Plus, we'll be on uh, lots of major network affiliates. It, it, it's just lots of good things ahead. You can read about the press release when you go to the website, and I'm just so excited. God's good. Lots of prayers for this program have gone up over four years, and this, uh, this new program, joint venture is a real answer to many of those prayers so God's good you know tonight I want to talk to you about an issue that the church and most people refuse to deal with and that's the reality of mental illness and depression that so many suffer from so many watching me right now let me say right up front mental illness is just as real as a broken leg just because it's not a visible illness does not mean it's not as real as someone with a broken bone a bad heart or any other illness Mental illness and depression are real. I've shared with you in the past that God's number one instrument of healing is called a doctor. One of God's chief methods of healing is called medicine. Where do you think the incredible intelligence and the special gift to be a doctor comes from? It comes from God. Where do you think the incredible intelligence and the inspiration to create medicine comes from? It comes from God. I want to encourage anyone tonight that's suffering from any form of mental illness or depression to seek out the best professional help possible. God has raised up mental health professionals and given these men and women the wisdom to create drugs to treat mental illness so that you can live a normal and productive life. 
Just like there's no reason to be ashamed to see a doctor if you break your arm, just like there's no reason to be ashamed if you have to take medicine to treat a kidney problem, there's no reason to be ashamed to see a doctor or take the proper medication if you suffer from mental illness or depression. For many people that are suffering from depression, tonight I want to help you find the joy in your life again. Many who suffer from depression have simply allowed the events and circumstances of their life to overwhelm them and paralyze them. You know, we learn at an early age how to deal with the day-to-day -day issues of life, how to deal with problems. What happens to many who are depressed is they've simply been unable to cope with the things that have happened to them, and they can't seem to get past certain problems in their life. Feelings change all the time. Our feelings are based on our perception of an issue or problem. Let me give you an example. If you have $20,000 of debt and you're only making $30,000 a year with nothing left over after your basic living expenses are met, you might perceive that $20,000 of debt to be a mountain that's impossible to move. If you continue to focus on that mountain, it starts to get bigger and bigger, and soon your perception is that it is impossible to ever be free from your debt. The longer you focus on the problem, the bigger it becomes, and that's when depression can set in. Depression is the result of being hopeless. However, even though you may just be making $30,000 a year with nothing left over after your basic living needs, you might look at that $20,000 of debt not as an uh, and a, a mountain that's impossible to move, but simply an obstacle that has to be dealt with. In other words, you don't focus on the mountain, but you focus on a way to move the mountain. You come up with a plan to retire the debt over a period of time, and instead of letting depression set in, due to looking at the situation as hopeless, you maintain a positive outlook since that debt is simply an issue that has to be dealt with. Depression can't set in where there's hope. Let me say that one more time. I want you to listen to me carefully. Don't miss this. Depression can't set in where there's hope. The other part of the answer to depression is serving others. The Bible teaches us that there is a call on all of our lives to serve others. And that if we will be about our Father's business, our Father will be about our business. If we'll serve others, it's amazing how our own problems become more manageable. If you're suffering from depression, let me encourage you tonight to get out and start finding ways to serve others. You see, when we serve others, we're serving God. Our God-given purpose in this life is to serve and glorify God with our lives. Depression can't set in. When you're serving others, depression can't set in when you're serving others. I realize that many people watching me tonight suffer from some form of mental illness that's just as real as any other type of illness. I'm going to be praying for you tonight that those of you who are suffering from some form of a mental illness will seek out the best professional help possible Take advantage of whatever medication that's prescribed to treat your needs. God's still in the healing business, and God can bring healing to those suffering from mental illness. I'm also going to be praying tonight for those of you who are suffering from depression. The twofold answer for overcoming your depression and finding the joy of the Lord again in your life is hope and service. Seeking the Lord to give you wisdom and direction and finding a solution to whatever problems or issues you're facing in your life. If you stay focused on Christ, He'll give you that hope you need to get victory over whatever battles you're facing. The other part of that answer is finding ways to serve others. I pray tonight that you'll get serious about finding ways to serve others. God's called us to be servants. He's called us to serve others. And when we're doing that, fulfilling our purpose in life, our problems, our problems simply don't seem as great. When you're busy serving others, you don't have time to get depressed. I pray that this word tonight will be a breakthrough in your life. 
if you're battling with mental illness or depression. God loves you very much. He wants you to have joy in your life despite whatever trials and tribulations you may be experiencing. That joy comes from knowing Christ as our Savior. When we know Christ, there's no such thing as being hopeless. When we know Christ, we have a desire to serve Him by serving others. It's through Christ that you can have victory over mental illness and depression. I'm going to be praying for you tonight. Believe in God that you're going to find that joy again. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of you are suffering depression tonight, which is the result of a mental illness. And that needs to be treated by mental health professionals and by medication. But there's also a lot of you watching me tonight that are depressed, not because you have some mental illness, but because you're hopeless, because you've let the, the issues of your life just beat you down. And you see no way to get victory. And it's that lack of hope that has led you to this depressed state. That's why I tell you tonight, your hope's in Christ. And where there's hope, there can't be depression. And the way you defeat your depression is to sit with God and get a plan to defeat whatever those battles may be. To sit with God and find ways to serve. Because let me tell you something. As long as you've got hope, as long as you're being a servant to others, depression has no room in your life. You are the one who's given depression an invitation to take over your life. Tonight is the night that you can take control back of your life. Say to depression, say to that depression, I'm not going to continue to live like this. I will enjoy God's peace. I will know once again God's joy. And that joy and that peace comes from the hope that comes from Christ and from allowing God to use your life to minister to others. So I'll be praying for you tonight. I know this is an issue. And you know, this may seem like an odd time to talk about this issue, but really it's not. We are accustomed to associating this time of year with the word joy. And most people seem to have great joy during this time time of year that we celebrate Christmas and bring in the new year but I can tell you because I deal with it every day this is also a time of great sorrow of great depression for many that's why I'm dealing with this tonight speaking to those of you who don't have that joy tonight that God will minister to you tonight and that you will know that joy in your heart and life Praise God. My phone number is coming up on the screen right now. It's area code 727-576-7884. 727-576-7884. If you're watching me tonight, if you are possibly suffering from depression, I'd love to hear from you tonight. Love to talk to you, pray with you, pray for you, help you find that peace tonight, help you find that hope you need tonight encourage you to find ways to serve God. So if you're watching me tonight and you need to know God's peace, if you want to get out of that state of depression, 727-576-7884, that's my phone number. Give me a call. Again, I'd love to talk to you tonight. love to pray for you. I know tonight many of you are hurting. Many of you are in that depressed state tonight. And my prayer for you is that before this program goes off the air at the top of the hour, that God's going to replace that depression with joy. That instead of that dark cloud hanging over you, there's going to be sunshine, even at 2 in the morning. So give me a call, 727-576-7884. Let me pray with you. Let me pray for you. 
If you've got other needs tonight, that's fine. Give me a call. You know, we had a great response to that program last night on the on the kids and MySpace and all that. Oof. You know, God's a great executive producer of this program. He knew that that last night, Christmas night, the night after Christmas technically, was the perfect night because exactly as I figured, so many families were watching this program last night. And it was a message that needed to be Need to be needed to be brought, needed to be heard, and based on the incredible response we received last night and during the day today, it really ministered to a lot of lives. So praise God. Just like I know this message tonight well, because it's an issue many face. So give me a call, 727-576-7884. Love to hear from you. If you get that busy signal, don't get frustrated. Just keep hitting that redial button. All right, let's go to the phones. Let me start tonight with Barry in Orlando. Hello, Barry. Hey, Pastor. How are you doing? Good, sir. How can I help you tonight? Yeah, I'd like to uh, have you pray for me this evening, if you would. Uh, Love to. I'm having um, uh, issues with my, I have some problems with my blood pressure. Okay. And uh, also, I'd like you to just pray that uh, I'm not really uh, looking for God to... Uh, build me stronger in his word and uh, uh, I'd like to kind of hoping to kind of eventually here get into uh, ministry uh, good myself. good yeah. good for you buddy well let me pray for you and I very appreciate you calling and uh, keep pressing forward my friend God's got much work for you to do if also pastor Bill yes sir could you also uh, also if you would uh, pray for my uh, little daughter Madeline she had uh, been seeing me who's this now my daughter Madeline, could you also pray Absolutely. for her? Absolutely. Love to. Thank you, Barry. Appreciate you calling. Father, thank you for Barry tonight. I pray tonight, O oh God, that you will minister to Barry and the needs in his life. Bring healing and strength to his body. Be with his little girl and bless her and meet her needs. And Lord, I pray tonight that you open the right doors of service for Barry. That you'll guide him and direct him where you want him to be, the things you want him to be doing as he faithfully serves and follows you. So I lift him up to you tonight. I pray your blessings be upon him. And I ask this tonight in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Barry. We'll be praying for you, my friend. Let's go down to Sarasota to talk to Harold. Hello, Harold. How you doing? Good, sir. How can I help you tonight? Hey, Pastor Bill. If you just stand in the with me, um, add your faith to mine, I'm... Uh, I'm a tithe payer, and I take my family to church. I'm not the perfect Christian, but um, right before Christmas, I had a business deal that just fell through, and it was absolutely devastating. And, uh, what was this now, a business deal? Yeah, it was a business deal, and uh, uh, we had a little business, and um, it just it fell through, and, man, it was just absolutely, just absolutely, yeah. I can't describe for you how devastating it was. And um, I'm a substitute teacher, and... Uh, I'm grateful for employment. Uh, I don't like teaching, and, um, sure. you know, I'm a broadcaster at heart, and uh, I'm just asking that you stand in agreement with me that um, this depression would go and that uh, God would bless me with uh, something that's uh, a desire in my heart that will make enough money to take care of my family and take care of my mom. And, Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, that, that's what I, I'm, I'm, I'm asking that you stand in agreement with me on that, Pastor Bill. Love to do that, Harold. Let me give you a word. Appreciate you calling. Let me give you a word of encouragement tonight. Even though you can't see it now and don't understand it now, God's in control. God didn't allow that deal to go through for whatever reason. But as you continue to be faithful, God's going to open a better door. For every door God allows to close, He'll open a new one and a better one. So continue to be faithful and know that God's got something even better and His timing will be perfect. Let me pray for you, Harold. Father, thank you for Harold tonight. I thank you for his faithfulness. I thank you for his love for you, his commitment to the gospel and, and leading his family in the ways of righteousness. I pray tonight, God, for his financial needs. Give him wisdom. Give him direction. Give him favor over his finances. Meet his and his family's every need. And God, I pray tonight that he'll just be able to leave that business deal that didn't materialize at the foot of the cross and just 
trust that God you knew what was going on all along and it wasn't the right deal it wasn't the right time it just wasn't the right it just wasn't the right thing for Harold at this moment in his life for whatever reason but you've got something even better on the horizon so let him continue to be faithful let him continue to put his hope and trust in you knowing that you are his provider and again, meet this, meet this family's every need. We ask and pray tonight in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Harold. We'll be praying for you, buddy. Let me go to Tampa. Let me talk to Lori. Hi, Lori. Hello. Hi, Lori. How can I help you tonight? Um, I just maybe just need some extra prayers. I've um, suffered from depression and anxiety for 10 years. And so... What what are you depressed over, Lori? Tell me what's going on in your life. What's got you depressed? Um, just, just every everything gets me. It, you know, I guess it's from um, my son to my family. I mean, mm. I have a great upbringing and everything, and I'm just, I'm just so depressed all the time. I hate to leave my house. Mm. I, where, where are you at spiritually, Lori? You go to church at all? Um, yes, I'm a member of a church. I try to attend Good. there, and I also go to my parents' church and, and function. Lord, 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 let me encourage you to do something. Get out of the house. Stay busy. Let me tell you something. When you're busy, when you've got things going on every day, when, you're, when you've got just lots of activity going on in your life, you don't have time to be depressed. I, I'm just being honest with you. I'm not trying to be flip. I'm not trying to minimize what you're dealing with in any way. I'm just being honest with you. When you are busy, that's why I talked earlier about service. When you're busy, you literally don't have time to be depressed. <laughs> because by the time you're done with everything, the day is over, you're tired, you're ready to go to bed, you go to sleep, you wake up, and you got, boom, a full day ahead again. And as you stay busy about doing things that are productive and important you just don't have time for the depression so let me pray for you tonight pray for your family god bless you father be with Lori tonight lord i don't know all the details of the challenges she has tonight or all of the issues but i know this i know that god you're in control of each and everything that's happening to and around her and god as she keeps her focus on you you will meet her every need I pray tonight, O oh Lord, that Lori will be convicted tonight to get busy, to be, to be busy about doing the things of God, to use her life to be a blessing to others. And in so doing, Lord, there simply won't be time to be depressed. So I pray for her tonight. I lift her up to you. I pray your blessings upon her. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Lori. We'll be praying for you, praying for your family. Let me go down to St. Pete and talk to Shana. Hello, Shana. Hello. Hi there. How are you tonight? Um, I'm good. I, I just, I'm a huge fan of your show. Pardon me? And, and I just really, really would like to ask you about my boyfriend. He cuts himself and he's bi and he like wanted to like have sex. Yeah. Well, Shana, let me tell you something. If you've got a guy, if you know somebody that's out there cutting themselves, they've got some serious issues. And they need help, professional help. And I deal with this, sadly, every day. And it's, it's horrible. And it's a, it, it's, a, it's a cry for att attention. It's a cry for help. So I'll be praying for your boyfriend and praying that God will guide the right people into his life to help him. I, I would hope his parents are involved enough in his life to know that he's got some real issues. And they'll help him find the people that can guide him through this difficult time. We'll be praying. Thanks for calling. Let's go to Seminole and talk to Alicia. Hi, Alicia. Hello, Alicia. Hi. Hello, Alicia. How can I help you tonight? Um, I have a friend, Chelsea. And she's been taking um, a bunch of pills, yeah. and she's in depression, and I, I don't really know what to do. 
and I just want to lift that up to you and to God. And how 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 old is she, hon? She is fifteen. Fifteen. She's fifteen and she's depressed and taking pills. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's like trying to take a bunch of ibuprofen, and cool. I've been trying to—I don't know what to do about it. That's crazy. What's? I mean, what? I mean, what? What's going on in her life that's got her so you know crazed out like that? Uh, there's a lot of stuff with her family, and her mom's been like kicking her out of the house, and her mm-hmm. friends are just like going away from her, and they're they're mm-hmm. not really talking to her, and mm-hmm. it's freaking her out even worse. She and, like, I think I'm the only one she has to talk to right now. Does she go to church at all? Yeah, she does. Does she? Mm-hmm. She so I mean she she got like in a youth group or something? Um, she's not in a youth group. She just goes to like the service on Sunday. Mm. What about you? You go to church? Yeah, I do. Well, I'll tell you what, you might want to try to get your youth pastor or something to talk to her because obviously it sounds like she needs somebody to talk to her and help her guide guide her through some of these problems and it doesn't sound like she's getting that at home. Yeah. And that's probably one reason why she's doing the things she's doing because she just doesn't know how she she's not able to cope with what's happening and she's just doing really extreme things to try to find a way to ease the pain. Yeah, well she's been trying to come to me, but I don't know how to handle it. I don't yeah. know what to say to her. Uh, you know, you know what, Alicia? There really is nothing you can say to her. It's, it, it would be nice if there were a few words that would make it go go away, but obviously her problems seem a lot deeper. That's what I'm saying. It would be good if you can get somebody like your youth pastor to get be involved in her life to try to help guide her through this because she probably needs some real help. Let me pray for her, though. I appreciate you calling tonight. Thanks so much. Father, I thank you for Alicia tonight. I thank you for this young lady and her concern for a friend who's just gone through some major issues in life it sounds like a family that's dysfunctional it sounds like she's not getting the love and nurturing she needs not to mention being 15 and dealing with all that entails so i pray for this friend tonight that god you'll guide the right people into her life that will share the love of christ with her that she'll find that hope that comes from you and lord in so doing She'll realize she doesn't need pills and she doesn't need the things of this world, but she can find her strength and hope each day in you. So I lift this friend up to you and I pray your blessings upon her. I pray your blessings upon Alicia. Bless her and her family. I ask this tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. You know, always, always, frustrates me when I hear like this young person supposedly in a church on Sunday I don't know if she's listening to the message I don't know what the message is but I know this I know the churches have got to do a better job when those people are in those pews on Sunday morning of dealing with these real issues you know You can sit there and preach the most theologically sound, doctrinally correct message that has absolutely no meaning whatsoever to the person in the pew. What I deal with on this TV program each night, this is real life. This is where people are at. This is what people are facing. These are the challenges that people have. I don't understand why you don't hear sermons on these kind of issues because this is what people need to hear. Who knows, if a message was preached about this, this young lady might have been at the altar after the service saying, that's me, that's me, I need help. That's another thing. I can't tell you how many churches don't even let people come to the altar for prayer. They whip through the service, 58 minutes right on the nose, and open the doors out the back of the church and get them out. My goodness, if you can't go to church on Sunday morning and find hope and strength and help in your time of need, what's the use of going? These churches have got to become more sensitive to the real life issues that people are facing. Deal directly with those real life issues. Realize that there's tremendous power in prayer and at least give people the opportunity to have that time of prayer and just seeking the Lord. 
Just got to continue to encourage any pastors watching tonight. Got to keep it relevant. Got to keep it relevant. Got to be dealing with the issues that, you know, you can sit there and teach God's Word all day long, but if you can't tie it to the day-to-day -day lives of the people, you're not connecting. You're not connecting. That's what people need. People need to be able to see the, the, the reality of the Word in relationship to the reality of their lives. Let's go to Julianne in Tampa. Hello, Julianne. Hello, Julianne. Hello, hi. Hey, so, Julianne, do me a favor. Hun, turn your TV down because we're on a delay. Just talk in your phone. I got it. How can I help you tonight? Well, actually, me and my husband separated. And the kids, well, my oldest child, she's eight. And I got three young siblings, and it's eight, six, and five. Mm -hmm. And they're in Cincinnati, Ohio. That's where I'm from. And they're going to a mental estate because I'm not there, but I have to handle, you know, my housing situ situations. And I separated from him from the domestic violence mm -hmm. and what he was doing to me. And now it's it's like God helped me. Mm -hmm. I um, got my housing taken care of, Good. something that he tried to mess up for me. Mm -hmm. And then um, I got a job. I just got hired. I start tomorrow. Good but for I, you. I need the prayer and I need to find me a church to get into because sure. I miss my baby so much. And they need me. Well, let me pray for you and your children tonight, Julianne. I believe God's going to help you get your family reunited and get your children back home where they belong. And He, the same God that's taking you this far is the same God that's going to see you all the way through this. So hang on to that hope and do get into a good local church. Father, be with Julianne tonight. I thank you, Lord, for bringing her through so much. God, as you take her each step of the way, I just pray tonight, God, that you will continue to strengthen her. Help her, God, to see your hand at work in her life. And we pray tonight for the restoration of the relationship with this mom and her children. Lord, whatever the issues were, let them be resolved so these children can be back home where they belong with their mother as a family. Open the doors for a relationship with a good local church. And I just pray tonight that you will minister to Julianne in a special way. Encourage her, strengthen her, continue to give her your hope. And we'll just thank you even now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Julianne. We'll be praying for you, hon. Let's go to Tampa. Talk to Greg. Hello, Greg. Hello. Oh. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, you know, you know what? A lot of times... You really, you you need a little bit of credit for what you do. Pardon I me? really appreciate everything that you do. Well, I appreciate that, Greg. How can I help you tonight, sir? Just say a prayer for me. I just want to say that I appreciate what you do. Well, thank you. I appreciate you calling and being so kind. Thank you, Greg. Father, be with Greg tonight. Don't know what his needs are, but I do know this, Lord. We all have needs. You know his heart. You know his situations. Just bless him, God. And continue to let him be an encouragement to others. So I pray for Greg tonight. I pray your blessings upon him. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate the kind words, my friend. Let's go to Sherry in Tampa. Hello, Sherry. Whoa, let's try Joan in Tampa. Hi, Joan. Hi. Hi there. How are you tonight? Fine. Good. How can I help you? Well, I, I want... I, Two things, uh, to pray for my sister, which has terminal cancer, okay. and um, and then myself, and for God to continue to use me yeah. as a vessel, uh, because I am a, a, a caregiver, I, I help anyone, oh, and uh, just to direct me right now, because I, I am having some issues, I, as far as employment, I, I uh, he has blessed me with a job, so I'm soon to to start working, and I, I thank God for that. Yeah. But just to guide me and place uh, the people in my life, the right individuals, the right. Other people in my life uh, with positivity that believe in God. 
Let's do it. Thank you, Joan. Appreciate you calling. Father, thank you for Joan tonight. I thank you for her faith. I pray for this sister, Lord, who's battling with a life-threatening illness. The fact is, God, tomorrow's promised to none of us. Each day is a gift, and we need to treat it as such. So I pray that you'll give this dear sister your peace. And Lord, I know that you're still a God of miracles, so touch her. And let your miracle-working power be at work in her life, her body. Be with Joan tonight, Lord. Bless her new job. Use her as a light for your truth on that job with those who may not believe. Continue to minister to her needs and just strengthen her each day and encourage her each day. I lift her up to you tonight. I pray blessings upon her and her family. And I pray it in Jesus' name for his sake and glory. Amen. Thank you, Joan. Let's go to Shea in Tampa. Hi, Shea. Hi. Hi there. How are you? I'm good. Hey, pronounce your name for me, hi. Shea. Shea. Okay, I had it right. Good. How can I help you tonight? Okay, well, um, Pepper, I just wanted to say that boys keep breaking my heart and everything, so I wanted to ask Shea, you Shea, 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 how old are you? I, um, uh, I'm 16. All right, appreciate you calling. You need to make sure you watch next week because I'm going to do a program on teen dating. Let me tell you something. You're 16. You don't need... The reason boys are breaking your heart, one reason is you, you don't have any business being involved with boys. I'm just being honest with you. I know a lot of people are saying, what do you mean? You're 16. You're a kid. You got your whole life ahead of you. Don't even think about relationships and all this nonsense till you get out of school. I know you turn on MTV and you watch the OC and you watch all these stupid shows and, you know, they're having relationships. But don't you see all the drama that they have too? Don't you see all the problems? Don't you see the lives that are being destroyed? Most adults don't do relationships well. What chance does a 15, 14, 15, 16-year-old kid have with a relationship? Serious. I'm being hard on you. I'm just being honest with you. You can cut out all that drama by just forgetting about it for now. When you're out of high school and in college and whatever, and you're going to have plenty of time in your life for that. You don't need it. So just a little word, a word of counsel for you tonight, Shea. And watch next week. I'll, one of the nights next week, I'm going to be dealing with this whole teen dating issue. God bless you. I'll be praying for you. Let's go to Patty in Brooksville. Hello, Patty. Hello. How can I help you, Patty? Uh, yeah, if I need prayer, uh, my boyfriend, he got hurt on the job, and he's on workman's comp. Okay. And workman's comp is not complying with his medical needs. Okay. And we are engaged to be married January 5th okay. of next year. Okay. And I just need prayer. He is home in excruciating pain. Well, let me pray for him tonight. What's his first name, hi? Daniel. Thank you for calling, Patty. Father, be with Daniel tonight. Lord, I thank you that you are the great physician. You're still in the healing business. And I pray tonight, O oh God, for your healing touch upon Daniel's body. Heal him, O oh Lord. Make him whole for the glory of God. Touch him even now. Make his body whole. And Lord, I just thank you for Daniel and for Patty, and I pray, God, that you will bless their lives as they put you at the center. And Lord, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that you will minister to both of their needs. So I lift them up to you tonight. I pray for your healing tonight in Daniel's body. I just pray that you will be with Daniel and Patty in a special way. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Thanks, Patty. We'll be praying. God bless you, dear. Let's go to Zena in Tampa. Hi, Zena. Hi. Hi, Zena. How can I help you? Okay, I'm calling because um, I heard the girl, the 16-year-old girl, talking about boyfriends and stuff. Yeah. And I just wanted to let her know that I started when I was 16. I have two children now. How old are How old are you now? I'm th I'm 33. Yeah. And it's not fun, and it's not cute. It's real. It's real life, isn't it, Zena? It's really busy. Yeah, and I'm still going through it. Like right now, I'm raising them by myself. Yeah. You know, 
and their father doesn't care, and I'm yep. like going through a lot of stuff, and I just yep. need prayer. And um, it's really hard. And yep. Yeah. It's and, um, re- it's real life. It's not a game. It's not a game. It's really not. And uh, how old, how old are your children, honey? Twelve and sixteen. Good for you. Good yeah. for you. And I'm trying to show them the way of the Lord. Amen. But Amen. you know the devil always works. But and they're I out there. They're out. The, the devil's out there busy after your kids too. Yeah, after me mainly yeah. because yeah. the more I try to reach for him, the more he attacks me. That's right. And I just need prayers tonight for strength well, sweet. and to let these young girls know that it's really not what they think it is. Absolutely. It's, it's live it's your a, life and do what you have to do, and that can come later down the line. Absolutely. And you have to live for God, no one else. Good, good word, dear. Let me pray for you tonight. Thanks for calling in. That's a great word. Father, I pray for this dear one tonight. I pray for Zena. I lift her up to you tonight. I pray for her and these children. God, I pray for your protection upon them. I pray, God, for your provision in their lives. And I pray more than anything, Lord, that you'll just give Zena your peace tonight. Lord, that you will just put your arms of love around her and let her know that you are pleased with her, that you will make her adequate each day, and that you'll meet her every need along the way. So be with Zena tonight. Be with those two children. And again, God, I just pray for your blessings upon this home tonight. For the glory of God. Strengthen this dear one tonight. Give her your strength. Give her your peace. In Jesus' name I pray. Thanks, Zena. Praying for you. Praying for your kids, too. Let's go to Ann in Spring Hill. Hello, Ann. Hi, how are you? Hi, Ann. How can I help you tonight? I just wanted you to pray for my friend Connie. Okay. What's, Hi. What's going I hear on with an echo? <laughs> yeah, that's because we're on a delay. What's going on with Connie? Um, she lost her husband, hmm. and um, it's been six years since my own daughter passed away, and hmm. it's it's really hard. It's never never easy to lose those we love, is it, honey? No. Yeah. Well, let me pray for your friend tonight. How long, how long has her husband been uh, deceased? Uh, it's been two years now. Two years? God. Let me pray for your friend. Let me pray for you too, Ann. Thank you. God bless you. Father, be with Ann tonight. I lift her up to you. I lift her friend Connie up to you. Lord, losing those we love is never easy, and there's always a, a void due to such loss. But Lord, I pray tonight that you'll give Connie your strength and that she'll find her strength in you each day as she moves forward with her life, lives her life. Same with Anne. As she continually deals with the loss of her daughter. God, I know you still have much for Anne to do, so let her focus on, on that work. And as she stays focused on you, God, you'll give her your strength and your peace to move forward. So I thank you for Anne tonight. I thank you for the love of a friend. I pray for Connie tonight, and I just pray blessings on both of these women tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Ann. God bless you, dear. Let's go to Louise in St. Pete. Hi, Louise. How are you doing, Pastor Kelly? Hello, Louise. How can I help you tonight? Well, Pastor Kelly, you've been praying for me. Uh, I got canceled again. Mm. It's in my bladder. And hey, I got a daughter no. been helping me, but she's sick too. Hey, Louise. Mm-hmm. You know Jesus is still in the healing business. You know that, right? Mm-hmm. I want to pray for you tonight. I want to pray for God's healing touch on your body tonight. Okay. Okay. God bless you, dear. Thank you for calling. Exactly. Father, I thank you for Louise tonight. I thank you for her faith. Lord, I read about the people that were healed in the Bible. And Almost every time Jesus said, Go, thy faith has made thee whole. Tonight I pray for Louise. I pray for your healing touch to be upon her body. And God, I pray that you will touch her and heal her as a sign to this lost and unbelieving generation that the power of God is real. Touch her and make her whole, O oh God. Let her faith tonight make her every whit whole for the glory of God. I ask and pray this tonight. In the precious name of Jesus, amen and amen. Thanks, Louise. We'll be praying for you. Let's go to Tampa. Talk to Cesar. Hello, Cesar. Hello, Cesar. Hello. 
Yes, sir. How can I help you tonight? Hello. Hello. All right. Uh, we got we got the lines mixed up. All right. You know, I know many of you out there tonight are watching. You're depressed. You're going through a difficult time. But I want you to know that God loves you. And He cares about you so much. And He wants you to have joy tonight. He wants you to have peace tonight. He wants you tonight to know His love. You don't have to be depressed. You're depressed because you don't have any hope. You're depressed because you've allowed your circumstances to absolutely consume you to the point you don't see any hope. God wants you to have that hope tonight. Your hope's in Him. And that's the message I've got for you tonight. That if you'll put your faith and trust in Him tonight, He will not only give you that peace, but he'll give you that joy. The Bible says it's that unspeakable joy. That's great joy. That's what God has for you tonight. Let me get one more call in before I wrap the program up. Let's, let's go to Melissa in Odessa. Hi, Melissa. Hi, my name is Melissa. And okay, we lost Melissa. All right. You know, as you're watching this program tonight, as you're out there watching me tonight, I want you to understand something. There's only one place you can find real hope. There's only one place you can find real joy. Let me tell you something. The reason that this TV program within the next couple months is going to be back on Nationwide in an afternoon time slot is because we're going to be going head to head with the people I call the false hope merchants. That's Oprah, that's Dr. Phil, that's Montel, that's this Dr. Keith clown that's on now. It's all these people who sit there in the afternoon and dispense false hope. You see, there's only one place you can find real hope, true hope. It's not from that New Age witch, Oprah. It's not from the guy who's so in love with himself, he can't get over himself, Dr. Phil. It's not from this new wannabe, Dr. Keith. It's not from Montel and his crazy philosophies. You see, all they do is provide what I call Band-Aid hope. That's that quick little fix from the world, that pat on the head that says it's going to be okay. Well, it's not going to be okay. Because as soon as their cameras go off, they don't care what happens to you. God cares what happens to you, not just now, but an hour from now, a week from now, a month from now, a year from now. And His hope isn't for a second. His hope is for all eternity. You say, Bill, where do I find that hope? Let me tell you, there's only one place you can find that hope, and that's in a relationship with Jesus Christ because that's the only source of real hope there is. Now as you're watching me tonight, if you're depressed, if you're watching me tonight and you just don't have any joy, you don't have any peace, I'm here to tell you tonight that you can have joy, you can have peace if you'll have Jesus. If you're willing to confess your sins and ask Him into your life and surrender your life to Him, one of the byproducts of that process, that salvation experience, is that you will now have great hope. You will now have great joy. You will now have great peace, despite whatever's going on in, around you. If you want that real hope tonight, if you don't want to be depressed anymore, you want that veil lifted and you want that peace and that joy, will you pray with me right now? Dear Lord, I come to you tonight. I know something's missing in my life. 
I yearn for real peace. I yearn for real joy. I yearn tonight for hope. I ask you tonight to forgive me of my sins. Tonight I invite Jesus into my life. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I give my life to Him tonight. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Take my life. Use it for Your glory. From this moment on, my life belongs to You. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. If you prayed with me tonight, if you made that commitment, the Bible says you're saved, you're born again, you're a new creature. I've got a book I want to send you. It won't cost you anything. All you have to do is email me. My email address is on the screen, bkellertlivepur.com. Just let me know you got saved. Give me your name and address. I'll send it right out to you. It'll help you in your new relationship with the Lord. Also, if you're watching me tonight and you need prayer, you can always communicate with me through my email address. That's, our, that's how we interact with you, through that email mechanism, bkellertlivepur.com. Email me anytime I can help you in any way. I'll be happy to pray for you and stand in agreement with you for whatever your needs are, okay? God bless you. Now, don't forget, tomorrow night, I'm going to be talking to you about heaven. Last Friday night, ABC had a two-hour special. You know, what is heaven? Is there a heaven? Does it really exist? I'm going to talk to you tomorrow night about this place called heaven. It's going to be a powerful program. You don't want to miss it. And Thursday night, a great New Year's resolution for you to adopt and embrace as your own this year. And Friday night, it's our last program of the year. I've got a dear friend on. We're going to talk about personal finances. And it's a great milestone. It will be the 1,000th TV program that we've done. So lots of great things coming down the rest of this week. I pray you tune in. Of course, we're here every Monday through Friday from 1 to 2 in the morning, live and in living color, right here on CW44, and of course streaming live on the internet at liveprayer.com. I love you, and I care about you so much, I really do. I thank you so much for all of your prayers and your support of this program. Trust me, I, I could not have been here for a thousand nights without your prayers and your support, so I really appreciate it. I know most people are kind of, you know, in a kind of a still a holiday mode throughout the rest of this week. So enjoy yourself. If you don't have to work, enjoy this week. And I just pray tonight that God will just minister to you. Especially those of you who watched tonight that were depressed. I pray that you found that hope tonight. Listen, you have a good evening, and I'll see you in 23 hours. God bless. There is a hope for you. There's a hope for you.